growing up, I was into street shit. Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I was. And went welcome back to another episode of Lit Podcast. You know how we do it. You know what I'm saying? We bring you the legendary, legendary artists in the city. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the hot seat today. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't even know how to bring them in. Let's see. You know what I'm saying? What's the name of your hood? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, say, we gonna keep it crunk over here. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So fire up. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, hey, hey, today, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Today it's going down. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Rock Saw. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all get that. You know what I'm saying? But today, you know what I'm saying? It ain't about nobody else. Picasso, it ain't about you today. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We're going down Picasso, man. We're going down the whole Triple D, you know what I'm saying? I got my boy, you know what I'm saying? John Lo in the motherfucking house, man. Yeah, What's yeah. up? Chillin', man, chillin'. <laughs> Represent yeah, that yeah. ag town, for real. <laughs> nah, it's a blessing. Nah, for real, for real. It's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Um, before, the, before I even start, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all know me, I get to talking. So, tell the people where you're from, what's your name, and... How it all started. Jalo, represent Ag Town, 817. Um, how it all started? <laughs> it started at midpoint. Midpoint. That's where it all started. Uh, shout out to Voting, Erskine. DJ. He the one that broke the record. Period. There is nobody else. He broke the record, and then everybody else went on after that. Everybody, once they got a hold to it, they took it to a whole nother whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that touched it is like it just it went from six thousand to ten thousand to a hundred thousand, just it just kept going. But anybody that touched it took it to a whole nother level. But Erskine is the one that started it. Period. Okay. So Shout out to Wody, R. I. P. Yeah, R. I. P. You know what I'm saying? R. I. P. Wody, Quit, you know what I'm saying? Nate, you know, all y'all top DJs, U Shay, you know what I'm saying? We just wanna tilt that hat. For real. But I wanna know where it started for you? Like, what what got you inspired to even start writing or even doing music? Um, so, I'm a preacher's kid to start off with. So, I was always playing the drums at church, and I just fell in love with music that way to start off with. Um, once I got <coughs> older, I wanted to get out of the church, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> and start doing my own thing. So, uh, I was heavily influenced to I guess you could say more East Coast hip hop. Okay. And um I was always the kid on the block that would be jamming MC like Big Daddy Kane where everybody else is jamming NWA and E. Z E. You know what I'm saying? I jammed both of them at the same time, but I listened to both of them while everybody else is listening, you know, the E Z E's, the NWAs, you know what I'm saying? The you know, that type of stuff or whatever. I was still listening to the Big Daddy Kings, the MC Lights, the KRS Ones, the the Rock Hymns, you know, all of them. So mm -hmm. um, that's where it started. Then as I got older, I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna start writing, and uh, I started writing in high school, and just took a whole nother spin. You so, know what I'm saying? So who's the musical influence? You know what I'm saying around you growing up in school? As far as rap, yeah. Like who was in locally that you was hearing doing? It? Um, <coughs> locally. I would say it was my homeboys, you know what I'm saying? The back then it was eight one seven Mecca. That's a whole nother story. But okay. uh uh Cho we had a group, he's my producer, uh, he had a group called So What. Um basically they influenced me, So What, Kenobi, uh, my homeboy Brian, who's dead, R. I. P. Right. Hypocrisy, you know what I'm saying? He's the one took me over to Cho House and then once I sat down and I'm, I'm like why are you just now bringing me around now? <laughs> We've been going to school for this long. Why are you just now bringing Oh, man, it's all good. Uh, but, yeah, one of my homeboys, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Kano. He's a white boy from Arlington. He's way before Eminem. You know what I'm saying? Was doing it back then. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? In the, in the 90s, early, early 90s. So those were really, as far as locally, those were the influences at that particular time as far as locally. Okay. Then once I started getting into it, then I started hearing everybody else and it was uh, just like, okay, who that, who that? Okay, cool. Uh, but one day, I'm at my uh, my producer house, uh, Peanut, um, 
Man, shout out to Peanut. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was gonna talk about him later on, but since you already got him out yeah, there, so shout I, out Peanut. I didn't know you know what I'm saying y'all two was really connected. Like, and I think I he said something about that. No, no, yeah, Peanut yeah. is it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's he's the glue for real. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting at Peanut House, and, and there was a group of Padman in there, and uh, they was the ones I was really just sitting down, just soaking everything in. Um, they didn't like me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was definitely a preacher's kid. Right. And so they was 5%. So I'm just like, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Peanut just looking like, you just going to sit here and take it. I'm like, they ain't bothering me. I'm good. As long as ain't nobody touching me, I'm cool. So right. I'm writing. They, so nobody was messing with me or nothing like right. that. They were just like, just always picking on me. You're a preacher's boy. You're a preacher kid. You're a Christian. And I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Cool. So uh, one day, I'm sitting in there and... Um, Picasso comes in with uh, James and they sit down, you know, listen to some tracks or whatever. And so they tried to pick on me. And so Picasso was like, why are you picking on him? He ain't bothering nobody. I know Picasso from Adam. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I didn't know him yet. It's your introduction. And this is my introduction. So it was just like, <laughs> it, 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 we almost kind of rubbed each other the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, he, you know, you got something on your face. And I thought he was being funny. And right. so I'm like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So then <laughs> after that, he was like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. And he's like, all right, come over to my house. He said, don't come around them no more when you when you practicing and you you know, you write, come over my place. So I went over there and it was like instant, instant, tutelage, tutelage. You ever see uh, Kill Bill where the white girl going to uh, the old Kung Fu master? Oh, huh? Yeah, yeah. It was like that. Okay. It's sanctuary. Yes. Okay. So it was like that. So Caso had me practicing and going back and forth with him and back and forth and back and forth. And then my uh, my partner at the time, uh, why not? He came in, Bilal, DJ Bilal. He came in and sat down and, and we formed a group called Mouth the Madness. And then from there, it just hip hop. Then we just deep out and doing shows. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it all started. And that's how I became into the game, you know what I'm saying? Because Caso took me under the same time Peanut was doing the beats and doing the managing, so. So Peanut with beats and management? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Shout out Peanut, man. So where you get the name from? Peanut! Peanut <laughs> baby, what? <laughs> Peanut, I sat down, when I sat down and I said that I'm serious about this, I think it would have to be 95. I said, I'm serious, and they were just like, they, they still knew me, you know, preacher kid, whatever. So I'm like, yeah, I'm serious, I'm serious, I want to do this. And they're like, well, what's your name? But my, my real name is Joshua, so it's preacher boy name. I'm like, uh, J Smooth. And so they look and they laugh. They're like, would you buy an album from J Smooth? Eh, you're right. <laughs> so so uh, uh, Peanut was looking, and he's in the room, and he looked, and he seen a G Loke rapper named G Loke, and then he had a Spiral Gyro album that he was sampling. And he just looked, and he was just like, Gyro. The whole room got quiet. Everybody yeah, was just like, like now, like, okay. <laughs> Dion was in the room, and Andre was in the room, and both of them was just looking like, from henceforth, your name is Jalo. I spelled it how I wanted to spell it. But it was really pronounced J-A-L-O. Ah, okay. So what does it stand for? Gifted Young Lyricist One. G-Y-L-O. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know it always name got always gotta have a meaning yeah. behind it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If you just got a name and ain't got no meaning behind it, then ain't nothing. Yeah. There ain't no power behind it. You know what I'm but saying? But yeah, Peanut Peanut's the one that did that. He from there became Jalo. And from there, just went to a whole nother level. So how did the group thing work out? The group thing was cool. We just did underground hip hop. And um, we always wanted to have a universal sound because we in the South, you know what I'm saying? So we just can't just have a whole bunch of East Coast beats. And we live in the South, and this is where we, you know, this is where we at. Right. So if we always trying to, we was looking for that sound, you know what I'm saying? And just, it just never worked out as far as the hip hop group. We made some noise, you know what I'm saying, as a right. hip-hop group, underground, you know what I'm saying, doing the shows and developing and stuff like that. But it was never to the level that we wanted it to. So after that, I went solo and, um, you know, started working on it. And 
went from there. Okay, so at this time, so you said the group didn't work out. What, show, what shows were y'all performing at, matter of fact, in Deep Bell? Because Deep Bell was the, that was the chitlin circuit for uh, everybody. If you if you from Dallas, you know that's, yeah, the, that's we where you start. We did the Rehab, we did the Q, we did the Dread Diary, we did... Um, that's the Reggae Club. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, 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 that's the Arm um, Factory, mm -hmm. we did... Um, Hey, what was that club? Um, we did all of them. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can't even remember the name. The Lizard Lounge. Oh, the, the, the Lizard Lounge. That was the White Club. Yes, we, did, that, the, yeah. we did the Lizard Lounge. We did, and then of course the Liquid Lounge, the Curtain Club. Yeah. That was our main spot. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. For for underground hip hop, yeah. Uh, shout out to Viz and Fats. Um, the A Team, they the one did the Final Fridays, and so if you wasn't doing Final Fridays on underground hip hop, you just Right. You wasn't making no noise. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. So uh, that was the biggest thing that then where we honed our skills and how to learn how to rock. You know what I'm saying? Because you get in front of crowds that you really ain't nothing but your homeboys and then people that you may not know. So you you better rock. Otherwise, you know, yeah, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work out, you know what I'm saying? So they ain't gonna wanna see another one. Exactly. <laughs> the first show we did was at the rehab and I remember we went in there and James and Picasso had us practicing months before we ever did anything and um we were sitting there getting tired we were just like okay we done practicing they're like no y'all not mm -hmm. so that's something that a lot of these young cats don't get nowadays so we we would practice and practice and practice and practice and practice then we finally got up in front of rehab and it wasn't we got in there and normally when you people are performing you invite all your homeboys out all your your aunties and aunts yeah. or uncles or whatever it was nobody in there that we knew. Nobody. When we got in there, we rocked. Our first ever show, we rocked the crowd. And then Picasso and James, like, y'all did good. We was like, y'all giving us a hard time. But okay, but thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it, but, yeah. Sure, it but, shows. Yeah. But yeah, yeah we, it showed because we we were ready. You know what I'm saying? And we rocked the crowd in front of people that we ain't never met before. So who was y'all going up against you know, like, at this time? Doing this little chitlin' circuit, it's like who was up and coming rappers that you know that that now that even at this time you was coming up. Um, as far as the hip hop shows, yeah, yeah, the hip hop shows. Um, there was a lot of us. I mean, that's underground hip hop. So what, Kenobi, um, uh, dang it, Abnubius, which was my sister's. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um. I can't even think right now. Right, and I know, I know it'd be a lot, but no, I didn't want to pressure you that much. I was just trying to get like the key people that you remember. Oh, yeah. that. Shout out to DJ Rodney. You know okay. what I'm saying? R.I.P. DJ Rodney, Mental Chaos. Um, they was, he was basically huge. You know what I'm saying? As far as when it came to us doing the shows and showmanship, you know right. what I'm saying? Because he was on that level of rocking crowds like us, so we was just like, okay, how's he do that? Like, right, you know, right. And dude, controlling that car crap. Yeah, he about. was shorter than me, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> little dude, you know what I'm saying? He remind me of uh the guru from the gangstar. Uh, uh you know what I'm yeah. saying? So that East Coast type of flavor or whatever, he was doing that type of thing. So uh but yeah, definitely dysfunctional with Picasso and them. You know, those were the those were the, the OGs for us, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like, pushed us or whatever. And that's way before my solo stuff. So. Yeah, so solo. Let's okay. Let's get come before I get to your solo stuff. You was talking about uh, Guru, you know DJ Premier. You know he's from Dallas, Houston. Houston, it's Houston. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought it was Dallas, but Houston. it's still Texas. Yes, that's crazy though. You know what I'm saying? How you know a lot of people from Texas have have a start and go up north, and then you know still be able to compliment anybody's sound. I mean, he's legendary. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's legendary. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, that boy. Is He's, he, I mean, you put the Mount Rushmore of producers. You know what I'm saying? He he should be up there. Right. You know what I'm saying? As far as really making that East Coast sound or whatever, he should be up there. I mean, along with Marley Mall, but DJ Premier is the next one in line, and then you may start getting to the the other producers, right. the Pharrells, the Timberlands, and stuff like. But Premier, he up there. Period. Set First. Certified. Yeah. So how did you get? What was the process of you going solo? What was what was that journey? Um, it was it was it was to the point where I wanted to make the sound more universal. Okay. And um, I wanted to add the southern southern flavor to it more because again, I listened to UGK and Scarface just as much as I listened to 
you know, uh, Wu Tang and Tribe Called Quest or whatever, I jam them equally. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like you may hear my southern draw, but, but I'm in the south. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you may hear the southern, the the East Coast flow because that's what I listen to. You know right. what I'm saying? But I wanted to make something more universal, and uh, you know the the formula. I'm not gonna even say the formula. Outcast and Goody Mob was like saved my life. You know what I'm saying? When I heard them, I was just like, okay. The sound that I always wanted was, I wanted the that that organ sound with the the organ kicking. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Just that type of flow, like from the remind me of the church. You right. Know what I'm saying? Okay. But I wanted some eight of weights to go rid it. You know what I'm saying? To go kick right with it, on top of spitting some type of lyrical East Coast flow. You know what I'm saying? So I was looking for that sound for the longest, and then finally came up with it, and that's when I started putting it together. Right, so at this time, okay, when y'all was a group, Peanut was still producing for yeah. you, right? So when you went solo, Peanut was still producing, and Cho. Oh, yeah, Cho. Okay, so both of them, so what, how did they even come up with the sound for you? What, what was the so, process? So, Cho is, <laughs> Cho is a genius. Right. I don't know if Picasso told you. Cho is a genius. No, for real, for real. I heard he liked to be funny. He, he's funny. Yeah. Cho is a genius, though. Cho would make something up and would be making fun of something, but it would be so genius, it'll be dope. Right. So when Cho did the Where I'm From beat, Cho was being funny. He was like, okay, what goes on at that point? <sighs> hmm. We got bounce music and we got West Coast music. Hmm. Let's mix that together. Okay. So really, when he made the beat, he was like, he was he was making fun of midpoint. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mockery. He was making fun of it. Yeah. And so Peter brought me the beat. He was like, hey, check this out. The tape had midpoint on it. Right. I'm just like, okay. I popped it in and I listened. <laughs> okay. Cho being funny. <laughs> That's a, I mean, literally, I'm saying Cho's being funny. Okay. I slept on it. You know what I'm right, saying? I'm right. like, I can't even think nothing right now. So I slept on it for a while, and then I came back to it, and I'm just like, I was in the living room off of Washington. I don't know if you know Washington and, and Arlington, North Arlington. Shout out to the North. Um, I was on Washington, and I'm looking out my window just thinking, and I heard the beat, and I'm just like, what goes on the midpoint? What goes on the midpoint? So all I can hear in my head is, what goes on the midpoint? Funky town downward, funky town downward. If you ever been there at midpoint, you know this goes on all night. It don't matter what's going on. That's what goes on. That's what shake the flow. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I sat there and I'm just like, okay. Okay, I'm not from funky town and I'm not from downward. Okay, I'm gonna put ad town in. Okay, is it ad town downward? Funky town, then, okay, I gotta add D town because no telling where this might go. Mm -hmm. So, I added that in, and uh, that's how I came up with the hook. And after that, I wrote the song, I put piece that together. It was real simple for the song, but the hook was it. That was it. So, okay, all right. So, was it just that one song? Did you even get to finish the project? I didn't finish it when I started it. No, I didn't, I didn't do the project to the album. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had I had like three songs. <laughs> I had three solo songs, and some of them songs was pieced together. Yeah. I think we had uh, where I'm from, and then we had Cadillac Pimpin', and then we had something else. Uh, and Cadillac Pimpin' was pieced together. You know what I'm saying? I was actually somebody else's song, and I was included on it. And then Peanut was did the beat, so he just, okay, we put this all together. We put that on the the underground CD, right? Right. I had like two, three songs. Okay. Once the album started coming together, then I started recording the album. Okay. And it was just like, okay, this is what we're going to do now. So, but yeah, when I first started, all I had was Where I'm From and Cadillac Pimpin'. And I, I forgot the other song. But uh, that was that was it. So, okay, so when you got through with this with this, with this song that, that solidified you because it became a hit, you know what I'm saying? It came a hit record. As a matter of fact, not a hit in a classic at that too. So what, like, what did y'all do? What was the process to even get into Flavor TV, getting into the radio? What was that process? Shout out to Bodie again. Um, 
the story is is we we had a show up in uh, Arkansas, and um, again at this particular time I was promoting for Red Rum, so I was promoting Cabal, you know what I'm saying, taking records or whatever, you know, serving the DJs or whatever. Right. So in the midst of me just still doing my little thing. I wasn't on the radar, wasn't on nobody's radar. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, hey, I'm just promoting, just getting in where I fit in. So, you know, they all on Rap City and got raps, buses and stuff right. like that, <laughs> posters yeah, and everything. Big, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know, dang, they got a video. Wow, somebody from Dallas is on Rap City. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. who, who else you know that's been from Dallas that's been on Rap City that you can think of? Nah, None. nah, Cabal. Cabal. Uh, yeah, Cabal, shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but outside of DOC. Yeah. Who yeah. else? There's no. Yeah. I don't remember. But, anyways, I'm, we had a show, so we were going up there. Really, we was just going up there to promote. And um, Pina had recorded the song, gave me a tape of it. I only had a tape. So he let Ghetto Priest and Mr. Lone have it on CD. They went up to Pine Bluff or whatever before. We we just rolled up there afterwards. So we get up there and uh, we stayed in Pine Bluff and the show was in Little Rock. So we all got on the bus to go from Pine Bluff to Little Rock. So we get on the bus and um, I don't know if you've heard Millennium Records. They was on the bus. They were for work. And uh, everybody was playing their music on the bus and I'm just like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? This is tight. You know, this, this is cool. So all of a sudden, uh, Ghetto Priest, he's like, yeah, we got our homeboy, we're going to play this or whatever, whatever. So he played a song, and I'm looking at Peanut, I'm like, I ain't got a copy. I ain't got a copy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a, oh, yeah, that's that on right, cassette. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, this on cassette. He's yeah. like, they got it on CD. He's like, oh, yeah, we, we, we was recording last week. I let them get a copy of it. I'm like, okay. So... The song come on and, and they, you know, this is it Ag Town, Ag Town. It was hardly nobody else, probably me and Peanut, the only one from Arlington on the bus. And then they said, Funky Town, Funky Town, and the whole back of the bus. And I was like, okay, everybody already know this song. So everybody come up, nigga, you got a hit, you got a hit. We were just like, okay. So basically, basically, so. We didn't even know. So basically, Peanut. Was looking out on the cool, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, by, just by, like by, I'm just letting somebody get a copy of right. a song, a song that we did. And, and then they are already spinning, and they like shit. Yes, they're getting the groove of it. Yeah. So we get it. We get to the show in Pine Bluff, and it didn't go off right. The promoter was shady, and the janky, show didn't even janky, go off. Janky promoters. Janky promoters. And, Man. Uh, <laughs> so we come back. We come back to the room. We get off the bus, and Erskine was just like, "Yeah, bring us a midpoint Saturday." For real? Like, yeah, bring it to me at point seven. I'm like, all right, cool. What time? Be there at 9.30. What, I, at night? 9.30 at night. Yeah. On Saturday. Oh, Saturday. I'm That's like, all right. Hell. He's be there at 9.30. I'm like, all right. You know, I'm like, hey, my song ain't never been played. Right, You know what right. I'm saying? He said be there at 9.30. I'm going to be there at 9.30. I'll show up at 9.30. But number 50 some people in there, everybody was sitting down. 9 30, you know what happens at 9 30 right. at a club. Everybody in there getting in there for free and trying to get free drinks and, yeah. and whatever, whatever. So that's drinks, everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's all they was doing. So everybody's sitting down, just chilling, and I'm looking like, he said, You got it? I'm like, Yeah. Here you go. I'm all discouraged. I'm like, Dang, it's 9 30. Ain't nobody getting up. Gonna hear this. He played it. If you came to the party feeling good, represent, represent. What's the name of your hood? Is it Ag Town? And people got up. <laughs> Every last person in the club got on the dance floor. And I'm like, you should have kept going. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I wasn't expecting that. And, I'm, you know, it's just like that moment. You know right. what I'm saying? You're just like, this is about to happen. He was just like, yeah. He said, I'm going to play it later. You, you gonna leave and come back? I'm like, no, I'm staying right here. Hey, 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 <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, shit. So if you know anything about Midpoint, at 12 o'clock, they play two slow jams right before they play the prompt music. Right. So he, he played the slow jams. You know that's yeah, how you play, you play the jam. Yeah. Get ready, because we about to take it there. <laughs> so he, he literally, he said, man, security, get ready. I was like, uh, he told security, get oh yeah, <laughs> yeah midpoint y'all, yeah hey, yeah shit midpoint long star nigga, oh shit, get ready. <laughs> so right after the slow song, 
Came to the party, feeling good. Represent, represent, what's the name of your hood? Is it Ag Town? Ag Town. Down work. Down work. Funky Town. Funky Town. P Town. P -town. And so, literally, <laughs> Eric, it was so quick, and people caught on because they already saying Down work for Funky Town. Right. All it take was about 10 Down work niggas in the club that's gonna tear the club up anyway. You, you come on, you know. Yeah. And so, Midpoint is a Funky Town club, period. I don't care what nobody say. But Dow Worth and Funky Town is gonna be there. So when that came on, it was a hit instantly. And I was just like, I cannot believe this. Like we've been we've been doing this for a long time. And we finally got one. And from there, every week, I like Peanut. He's like, no, it ain't. I said, Peanut. He said, I'm hearing. I said, you need to come see for yourself. He go up there and look, and he was just like, Think I didn't believe it. Uh, I mean, he heard. He yeah. he was already hearing the word. But right. He was just like, cause they weren't coming to midpoint. They was still in the studio doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. But they wasn't. They didn't kick it like I was. Man, he got up there. And he was just like, this is what we gonna do. We gonna put it on the mixtape. We got. We ran from there. So. um I think who who took us first? That sound good. Okay, okay. You remember that sound? Mm -hmm. good? Yeah. Right. Shout out to Nate. Shout out to Scar. They took us before anybody. You know okay. what I'm saying? So they took us and they had the underground CD. So we was in there, and uh, I think it was a Thursday night. James from Red Wrong in there, and at midpoint, and they were playing a song. I think Rock T had it at that particular time, a Thursday night, and so he played it. And he was Man, like, said Rock T, boy, ooh." Yeah. Ooh. So he was like, uh, he was like, who was that? He didn't even know it was me. Cause you know, James was right. so caught up in Red Rump. You know what I'm saying? He was he was doing so much. So he was like, who was that? That's Jalo. Jalo who? Nigga, yo Jalo. He like, my Jalo? <laughs> what? <laughs> Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> Why did everybody mine? That's mine. <laughs> he, <laughs> he called Peanut and it was this. I got a loaf. Jallo. What? Peanut. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Nigga, what did y'all do? Like, how, look, come to the office. <laughs> so he, so, so he was like, damn, like, like okay, like, mm -hmm. how in the fuck and where in the fuck and like, when? Yeah. We, nigga, we on Rap City. We're getting played and ain't getting no spins in, in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? They got West Coast love. Cabal got plenty of West Coast love. But they wouldn't get no love in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't get no spins. So all of a sudden, even getting played in the club, you know what I'm saying? You got a hit that everybody's singing with no money. You know what I'm saying? And then he that's when the Red Rum started talking to us. And so um, Rock T took it to the radio, put us on Battle of the Bands. I think it lost the first time he played it. Cocoa Butter, back it the next week. Cocoa Butter. R.I.P. Cocoa yeah, Butter. R.I.P. Cocoa Butter, man. Cocoa Butter, back it the next week. After that, we broke records. I think we won like 11 times. We, I think we knocked out Pookie's record. You know what I'm saying? Because he was the only one other one that that won Battle of the Band straight mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. It won so many times, they like, okay, we're going to have to retire this. So it, that was the last time they had it. But yeah, uh, yeah, Cocoa Butter took it and played it. And uh, and this is the power of radio. And this is what I could tell y'all, some of y'all local cats. If radio want to play your song, they'll play it. They'll edit it for you regardless. The song that they had was a version with me, Ghetto Priest, and Mr. Long. It was very, very long. You know what I'm saying? They had the Oak Cliff version, the Oak Cliff hoods and stuff like that in Fort Worth hoods. Right. Okay, so the one with the Ghetto Priest. The Ghetto Priest, I already recorded that before you even did? No. Nah. Okay, all right. No, all right. We, re, we, we redid it. it. Okay, yeah, all right. It was, right. My, it was me basically showing love. I'm like, right. nigga, y'all y'all put me in the mix like that, and that's what set everything else. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all playing on the bus, which Wody heard it. Right. Wody told me. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So I put them on. They was the first remix, and that was the version that they took to the radio. So the version that they had was real, real long. They took that radio, and they, they edited it themselves. So they put the hooks on there, my hook, the Oak Cliff hoods, and then after Ghetto Priest verse, 
they put Dallas when she was representing for Fort Worth. Right. And they edited themselves. They took off the third verse, and I was just like, I, "That ain't cool." Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you hear your song, you want to hear the full version, yeah, but you like, right. "Hey, it was too long." So they edited themselves. I'm like, look, but y'all didn't have to. But that sounded like nobody didn't have control over. We it. had no control over it. Right. They did it. To, they did it themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? They like. This is the version, so you're gonna have Jalo, <coughs> Hook, Ghetto Priest, Hook, song was off. So after that, that took us on the radio, got a whole lot of play. Then Red Rum start coming in, and it's just like, okay. Um, yeah. You Red Rum was big at the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Red Rum was real huge, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, 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 so seeing you coming from underneath that umbrella, you know what I'm saying, and you doing the flavor commercials, flavor interviews and stuff like that, you know, club interviews, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was that What was that experience like? Because, like, cause it seemed like when you dropped that song, it was just like, it was like everybody was seeing you everywhere. You was everywhere. It, it wasn't at first. It was. It, it was, seemed like it. To it the, seemed like it. But right. We before we ever touched the radio, we was already in the streets. So it was like you already see me out with Red Room. I just right. wasn't. I wasn't on Red Room. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was like again, I was promoting for them. So they was already seeing me in these clubs or whatever. So they they seen me, and then all of a sudden the song came out, and they was just like, "That's you." You know, I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." Yeah, that's me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they were just like, oh, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? So they walking me in. Some of those that Red Rum wasn't getting through. I'm just like, how am I getting in now? Right. It's like, nigga, your song is what got you through. Even in Houston, we took over the Capitol. Right. 2000, which for Dallas don't never happen. We was going head up a wreck shop. And, and to the point where they seen us and they was like, oh, you Jalo? I was like, yeah, I'm Jalo. You cool with us, dog? You know what I'm saying? What y'all need, whatever, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. Man, that capital was something serious, man. What's some capital stories you got, man? No. I know some man nope. that's safe. Nope. Well, he nope. said, no, nope. no, nope. nope. man. No, nope. say, man. He talking about 2000 capital, too? Yes. Oh, say, man. <laughs> hey, man. Say, man. I was out there. So, we, you know, so I know. We was the only Dallas people that really got that type of love at the capital. Right. You know what I'm saying? We 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 get played on the radio. We got commercials on the, on the radio. At the same time, we on the strip. Everybody got Jolo shirts. Shout out to Dream Entertainment. They helped us out promoting. You remember? Yeah, Dream Entertainment. So, yeah, uh, world. so yeah, they they helped us out passing out the shirts. So Dallas was felt. You know what I'm saying? We right. was, when I say we was going head up a wreck shop, I think that was when uh, what was that? Love a lead song, whatever. You know, uh, dang, what was that song? Bubbly. They had on the radio. Which uh, one? It was the one they played on the radio. I can't remember. But anyways. They it was wreck shop and it was us. Okay. That's that was the anthem for that year. And so when we got back in town, I mean, everybody looked, they was just like burr, 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 burr. What did y'all do? What did y'all do? All kind of labels, Def Jam, Atlantic. Columbia, I, everybody was calling that that right. time because they said that you uh 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 Cause I, I was watching on the, uh, on the podcast and he was saying something about that y'all um, y'all 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 uh, how can I say it, man? Godly, y'all fucked up the industry. Y'all fucked the industry head up. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you know what I'm saying. Y'all beat the industry in a way. So Skip, <laughs> Skip Cheatham invited us up. And uh, he sat down and Skip is smart. Don't get it twisted. Right. Uh, Skip was on K on the phone and he was just like, yeah. He said, I'm going to talk to y'all and I want y'all to tell us the whole story. And so, you know, the story that I just told you, the same way I told him. So he's on the radio talking about this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So everybody hearing, you know, all the, the local labels and everything like that, everybody hearing, they was just like, he said, do y'all hear what he said? He got the streets. He took the streets. Everybody know this song. He didn't pay nobody to call me to request this song. Right. People are naturally calling at all times of hour asking for this song. He said there was nothing I could do. I had to play the song. Mm. I had to put it in rotation. By demand. By demand. So everybody was like, no, nah, they paying. You know, they, they he paying something. You know, they right. play. I, I was broke. I got radio play without real wrong. 
Red Rum picked me up because I got ready to play. <laughs> Do you understand me? Red Rum, <laughs> Red Rum didn't need me. <laughs> but say because because but K one hundred and four was charging. Exactly. Well. Oh, but I mean, it was hard to get up there. <laughs> there you four. go. There I mean, you go. I'm just saying. <laughs> there you go. It was, it was, it was some plans going on, or whatever, whatever the case may be. That major labels had to come out and had to do broadcasting and pay for commercials and whatever. And then they artists may get played on, you know. Right. But um, he was just like he said, y'all, y'all did the, the formula. He said, y'all really took the Metroplex. And y'all outsmarted the majors. That's what he said. Uh, outsmarted them. He okay. said y'all outsmarted the majors. He okay. said. He said. I'm gonna tell you what happened. He said. I seen. He said. I seen Def Jam coming down. Oh uh, no, a source van or something like that. Or one of them Def Jam buses that came down. He said, and they took it, and they took the bus to Plano. For what? That ain't your market. He said, but y'all, y'all didn't. Y'all in Fort Worth. Way on the, the outskirts, and then y'all Waxahachie, then y'all all the way in Pleasant Grove, Mesquite, and then we ain't gonna even talk about all the other hoods. You know right. what I'm saying? Like y'all all over. You know what I'm saying? And then y'all con conquered y'all own hood. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he said y'all outsmarted the majors. He said a lot of majors don't spend time like that, and this is an open market. Everybody know that. Right. This is an open market, you know what I'm saying, that anybody can come in. If you take it, you can take it. You gotta put the groundwork in. Yeah, you gotta put that groundwork so in. So he was he was bragging about it. He was like, Yeah, he said, I don't know Jalo. He didn't. You know what I'm saying? I see him see him in the mall, but I I didn't know him. Because I don't know him because because I had the intro on the radio. You know, the morning intro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, Picasso was doing his thing. Yeah, but he didn't know me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that was that was something big that happened. So it was funny. Now that you speak about it, we can talk about it. Uh, the payola. I was at the uh, K104 Symposium. I don't know if you've been to one of them. Mm -hmm. So basically, so-called so uh, music conference or whatever. So I'm walking up, and I hear somebody say, yeah, you know, why y'all play local artists or whatever on the radio or whatever? So, you know, uh, how much Pookie and Jalo had to pay to get played on the radio. Dude, straight up ask Skip Cheatham, how much did Jalo and Mr. Pookie have to pay to get played on the radio? And so, Skip is like, I don't even know Jalo. Right. <laughs> he said, but he, he, he basically took over the streets. Pookie and them, they do their groundwork. Right. They are naturally in the streets. Nobody's Forcing nobody to call in. These people are naturally calling in to get played. Hey, can you play this song? Can you play this song? Hey, can you play Mr. Pokey? Can you play Jalo? Can you play? So that's what they're doing. So no, Jalo ain't never played. I I turned around and walked right out. I, nobody seen me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I heard, but I heard them say it. I was like, wow. I'm like, do they not know? I'm riding around a '93 protege. Like, I ain't got no money to be playing. Right. Get, get played on the right that. That don't make sense to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that was a, a, a huge thing. You know what I'm saying? After that, same thing. 979 came in, and you remember when they started, they played all kind of local people at that particular time. Who's the hot, the hot local people? Yeah, they were. Jalo, DeVille, Cream Team. DeVille. <laughs> you know, uh, we were Powerhouse. Yes, yeah, Powerhouse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they like, we don't Shout play out now. DeVille, yeah. So, uh, they played them and uh, played us or whatever. Same thing. We paid to get played on the radio. And what this time, see, at this time, you right, because at this time, it was what? K-Rock, you, Pookie. Lucci ain't even have his ass. Well, Lucci wasn't even, uh, he was just coming. He was just on Crook for Life. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was really K Rock because it was the animes. That's the one you were talking about, yeah. the animes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. And that, uh, uh, uh. How that, you know about anime? You too young. Man, what you talking about, man? I used to perform in anime. Matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you another story. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. the Oak Cliff Assassin. But man, <laughs> that nigga was hell. Man, I would never say, I tell y'all, y'all niggas come perform behind that nigga. Oh, yeah. It was over with. Yeah. That nigga had about 40 people on stage, the whole Club, just yep. rattling, you know what I'm saying? And you know you got a good song, but it was just his energy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? The energy he brought, you know. So it was just like, golly, he was like, damn, I need to step my game up some more. But you know, yeah, I used to perform at anime. You know, I used to say, man, I, I look, got, I'm an Arlington dude, and uh, I remember coming up 
and people was just calling me. They were like, "Can you come do the song?" I'm like, "Where's that?" Oh, it's at After Hours. After Hours, where? Off of Fisky. I'm like, Fisk for what? <laughs> 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 what time? <laughs> how, how, much, how, much, how much y'all pay? <laughs> we gonna pay you? To, oh, all right, cool. He said we only need you to do that one song. All right, cool. So I'm looking at I'm, I'm looking at Pick. I like Pick. He was like, "What?" I said, "We got a show." He was like, "Where?" I said, "At some after hour spot." He said, "Where?" Off of this you, Fit, nigga. Okay. All right. It was just me and Pick. Right. We broke up in there, and, and again. You go to them type of after hours, you know they know, everybody know each other. So, you know what I'm saying? We walk up in there, it was like it's one way in, one way out. We was just like, hey. That's it. Let's do it. We got up there, rocked, got our money, jetted out. You know what I'm saying? But it was I wasn't scared to go nowhere. And I'm from Arlington. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So Everybody didn't want to go everywhere. I was in every hood. Right, right. Pleasant Road, Bunton, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm Dixon Circle. I mean, you name it. We was there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Every hood down there almost the same. I mean, really is the same when you pull up. It's just following protocol. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you cool. You, They'll be cool with you. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But you act scary and, and like... You got a problem? They, oh, we gonna get them. Yeah, same. Yeah, that's your. You know, they smell free. They gonna get you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So, yeah, I didn't have no problem. I mean, look, I'm, I was raised in Arlington. You know what I'm saying? I've been here since the '80s, but all my family's from Chicago. Right. Y'all ain't seen hoods. Right. Until y'all go to Chicago. Right. <laughs> yeah, man, that's how you. I, I, done, I, done, I done been up there. I done been to Chicago, Indiana. You, you, you know walk on a block. You just like okay. So you mean to tell me it's four different games on four different corners? Yep. And don't nobody interact with each if it's yeah, I, a, I, be a problem. I tell that story every time when I went up there, man, coming from the south, and nigga run up to me, nigga talking about put it on the boss. I'm like, huh? <laughs> What the fuck, nigga? What? I ain't from here. The boss, nigga. What? Nigga, <laughs> what? <laughs> what, nigga? Shit. I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm, I'm good. I ain't from here, man. <laughs> nah, for real. I done had some experience. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell a lot of people, get out, mingle. You know what I'm saying? Get to know people. You know what I'm saying? Man. <coughs> so, <coughs> did you even know how big or, or the impact that you made when you put this song out? Nope. It never resonated to you? I was on the radio and I'm, I'm at work. I kept the 95, you know what I'm saying? The whole time that I was I was um, doing the Java project. And that's another thing I tell people. Nigga, if you got passion, make sure it's your passion for real. Because if you want it, you'll make it happen. So the whole time that I did Java project, I had a 95. The whole time. Right, right. So this is my schedule. I get up, go to work. 7.30 to 6 o'clock or whatever, get off at 6 o'clock. From 7 o'clock to about 11, I'm in the studio. Shout out to the kitchen. You remember the kitchen? Yeah, the kitchen. Uh, yeah, Jay, and, uh, Jay and then, uh, not the kitchen, um, Dream Circle. Um, Care of. It used to be off of Keystone Pope. Dream Circle, the studio. You talking about everybody was talking about behind Grandies? Over yes, there? that one. Yeah. Uh, I think Stampede was there too. Yeah, uh -huh. um, so yeah, I would be there and then from there, I go to the club, and I did that for months. And he was like, "How do you do that? Like, how do you sleep?" I'm like, "Look, <laughs> I got kids, <laughs> so I gotta take care of these kids, and take care of my bills." But after that, you know what I'm saying? This is my, you know, this is my love. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, that's what I did. But yeah, I didn't know the impact. I'm at work. Song, your song being played on the radio. Okay, cool. Thank you. So it wasn't providing any show money. Or no, anything? it was. Right, but right. I just it wasn't making to the point where I could quit. So you know? what about the like? Okay, what about publishing or anything that did you have? Yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago. But right. Like you, like you said before, all the business wasn't taken care of the right way. So it was a lot of things that we missed out on. A lot of things that we got that nobody got. You know right. what I'm saying? So. I got in doors that a lot of people couldn't get in. Then other doors, I'm like, okay, I should have been through that though. If you really think about it, I never had a video for where I'm from. Right, right. You know what? Never. And I should have. Red Rum had Cabal on Rap City with a video. And I couldn't get a video done for where so I'm what, from. So what was going on? Okay, what was going on in between? Because, yeah, that's cause, cause, you know, you know, cause I, I, I always wanted to know because I know once once you once you got done and you had that song, 
and it was fire. It was just seemed like you know, Vin like was next. E every everybody was gone. No, it was like everybody disappeared. It's like Red Rum disappeared, you disappeared, like everything just disappeared. Like what happened in between that time? Like when when that song was getting hot and you was out here traveling. The, 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 the again, the the impact that we had, we had no idea. We just knew that we was getting radio play. Once the beat jam came, the first beat jam, I think, with 97.9, we got up in there, and at that time, we was all, we were still still performing, but we all looked, it was just like, kind of down, we was just like, man, do we even want to do this, like, for real? Like, yeah, we here now, you know what I'm saying? So, we get there, and they was like, well, here's your dressing room. It's just a, a closet, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody, it's like, it's a whole bunch, it's real wrong, we beat. Right. You know what I'm saying? We like, all right, cool. So we were we were down. You know what I'm saying? We right. just like, do we even want to do this? You know what I'm saying? They ain't treating us right or whatever. I'm like, look, and so I didn't care. I'm like, we doing it. You know what I'm saying? So right. we got up there and um, we go and I think I think it was Vita or Vita Loca that introduced us. Okay. And I know Vita personally. Yeah, shout out Vita. Um she introduced us and she was like, Yeah, we got we got Chavo and Vito for Red Rum Records. And so the whole crowd was, yeah! And we were just like, eyes lit up. We was just like, wait a minute, they screaming for us. Yeah. So we get out there and we start rocking and everything like that. And we was just like, okay, cool. The song came on and all you heard was, and the whole crowd went like, you seen WWE? Yeah, I, I used to watch that with, with all the cameras start going off. You see all the cameras from everywhere. Everybody out of their seat. And it was just like this. I literally looked around. I was just like, oh my God. Everybody here know this song. And that's when we knew the okay. impact. And that was what, that's what made us. They, we were just like, okay, it paid off. Because okay. we was right. down. Okay. When I say all we right. was down, we was down. All we right. was ready to go. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But right. when that happened, it was just like we won the Super Bowl. Right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, to speak after that, uh, I would say Red Rum was uh, Red Rum was too real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the realest label out there, period. And uh, everybody started getting picked up. You know what I'm saying? So I slowly start fading out. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to come around no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, I was still down, but, you know, and still down to this day. Right. I got love for them. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, it was just like everybody started getting picked up. So the main people started getting picked up. And we was just like, yeah. Okay. I mean, I ain't going to lie. Red Rum was like, I death row. Here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know I wanted to be Red Rum. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know, that's just what it was. Because I remember that was the most prominent Period. In your face, yes. Now it was a lot of people out yes. before, but the far as the marketing, that been on TV, yes. You know what I'm saying, and, and that 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 truck yes. and that symbol, you know yes. what I'm saying, like oh, it was like boom. So yeah, that that's what happened, man. It was just like slowly but surely, and then it started getting to the point where we was just like, look, real rum is no more. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was just like, so we would go to the club, and then and then that's when we start rebranding ourselves. Which Picasso is a, a, a genius because he rebrands himself. <laughs> yeah, man, he does a damn good job. How he he, he don't want to get away with that. Though. That, motherfucker, that motherfucker can transform. You know what I'm saying? Like shit. instantly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, we start going to the club. They were like, we. It used to be when we come in, we got red rum in the house. It was just like, no, we got Jalo and Picasso in the house, and they were right. like, okay, we get it. You know what I'm saying? So. That's what happened, and then slowly but surely we were just like, okay, we by ourselves, you know so, what I'm saying? But damn. So I mean, I mean, so what's some things you wish you would have known then that you know now? Um, I definitely would have handled my business a little bit differently. Um, I think I would have took more time and put the project together and having it ready than to be rushing. You know right. what I'm saying? Don't rush. If you already like you already got a song on the play on the radio, and then you rush to put the album together, you all you already kind of behind you know the ball game. You should already have everything in motion and ready. So that way, when it happens, cool. Because my album was supposed to drop at a particular time, it did drop. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I missed a lot of sales. You know what I'm saying? I'm in 
the Parks Mall, which is crazy, it's supposed to be a roguish mall now. You know, they go, <laughs> it's Arlington, man, come on now. <laughs> but, but we've always been crazy, you yeah. know what I'm saying? They fighting, and they're like, look, these youngsters are acting a nut, you know what I'm saying? But it's always been that way. Yeah, but they don't understand how Arlington is, because you know, they, like, you got Grand Prairie right here, borderline. Yeah, you got Fort Worth. Fort Worth right here, borderline. Yeah. Like, you can be, man, I, you can literally think you be in Arlington, but you in Fort Worth, nigga, get, get shipped right on up, younger. <laughs> <laughs> I know, nigga, because I was on Division one day. Oh, and I was on Division. Nigga, them niggas took me to Fort Worth. I said, hell no, nah, nigga. <laughs> oh, you niggas take me to Dallas, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Division to do that because you like you're blinking. You like wait a minute, five months. Where are we at? Are we in Fort Worth now? What? Yeah, yeah, shit. I'm like, damn. It ain't that. It ain't. I mean, it's that quick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you you rolling on Division in about five ten minutes. You. Does that say eight twenty? So, so I know it's a melting pot. See, a lot of people yeah. don't understand when they say when they think it's a suburb, but they gotta understand. It's a melting yeah, that's pot. Yeah, that's a suburb full of fucking gangsters yeah. from, from California, Oak all, Cliff, nigga, all over. From all over, nigga. You know what I'm saying? They just got game and they sitting out there. You know what I'm saying? Burning them fruits. You know what I'm saying? And they say ahead and climb up that tree if you want to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like it, it looked like the suburbs, but you you run to certain spots and it's just like. Yeah, you got people out there, you got shot collars, you got all type of stuff like that. You got people out there playing with money. You ain't got to, people don't understand, you know, you can't never judge a book by its cover. You never. Know? And, I, and I think that also go for the land itself too, man, you know. I mean, it's period. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying, it's where, everywhere you go. I tell people like, like, like how Picasso be saying, like, I'm from South Dallas. Yep. But you know what I'm saying? But look at me. You know what I'm saying? I'm different. You know, I'm a yep. warrior. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He got a totally different. But that boy from the goddamn hood hood. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's like, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter where you is. Where you, it's your mind frame. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I'm like, I say Ag Town and they people used to laugh. And I'm like, yeah, come on out there if you want to. You know what I'm saying? They like, y'all think it's just going to be somebody going to roll over? No, no. <laughs> I, I remember I seen somebody talking about, uh... <laughs> Who was it? Rainwater was talking about Arlington. Oh, who? Oh, uh, for uh, Emma, uh, both Reeves manager. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I went to Arlington. He said, I'm out there. He said, look, I went to school. I think he went to Timberview or something like that. He said, I'm in Arlington. He said, it was fights every day. Yeah. He said, you better be come prepared because it's going to be a fight. For real. I'm like, he said, he said, they, I got into so much more trouble in Arlington. They shipped me back to Dallas. I like that. I said that sounds about. They used right. to film them fights, them Arlington fights. Then, yeah, that's yeah, them, 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 for that. yeah them, them fights were big back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like worldwide. Mm -hmm. Like for real, Take A. Mm -hmm. Yo, Take A. Oh, Take A set the record. You know what I'm saying? We can't forget strange. about Take A. You know what I'm saying? You know, hey, hey, nigga, what, nigga? I ran the race, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny. You know, people talk about. Talk about Arlington, but I'm like, I said, we made noise too. Like, we worldwide. And they were like, what you mean we worldwide? I said, the stanky leg is from Arlington. Jazz boys. I said, that's from Bowie, my school. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's from Arlington. They're like, for real? They don't say, they from Arlington, they from Bowie. <clears throat> Think about that. The stanky leg is worldwide. We so, talk about Japan. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. that's from Arlington. And Germany. In don't Germany. Forget, don't forget Germany. You know what I'm saying? TK, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so, TK, I mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's that's one thing. And then uh, uh, Ricky Bobby, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ricky that's from Arlington. So I'm like, you got all these people getting videos played and you Solo know. Solo Lucci. You know what I'm saying? All this from Arlington. So yep. Mr. Rogers yep. from Houston, you know what I'm saying? He he, he, he went to Bowie. They, Mr. Rogers went to Bowie? Talking about Mr. Toilet Bowl, Mr. Riley, Rogers. DJ Mr. Rogers. Yeah. That, that produced uh the uh what's the uh the flex. Uh-huh. Hit him with the, the flex. flex. Yeah. yeah. Uh so yeah, they he from <coughs> Yeah. Okay. He okay. used to now he doing stuff with yeah. Larry June and everything like that. But all these people from Larry too. June go oh. hard. Yeah. Yeah. So he doing production, I'm like, okay, but you know, he's used to now, but he's from he from Madtown. Right. So, I mean, it's it's a lot of people out there from Arlington that people, they forget about. You know what I'm saying? But right. Eargasm started in Arlington. Eargasm started in Arlington. Okay. Period. Okay, all right, all right. I thought the first one was in Irving. I ain't gonna no, lie. No. I the first one was in the Form 303. 
Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? It was like a, I guess you could say like a bizarre mall. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's where Eargasm started. I mean, everybody used to come up. Switch House and them, all of them used to come up there. You know what I'm saying? That's where they knew when they hit the city. Okay, where we going? We going to, we going to T-Town? Okay, cool. Okay, we got to hit for work. We going to hit Arlington first? We going to hit Arlington. So yeah, they knew. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Chameleon and, and Paul all them used to be up in there like regular. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Slumped up. All of them, they know, Airgasm. They trust me, they know. Right. You know, hey, that's where we get our money. Chew. We stop it. We hit these retail spots. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We so, was all in there. The young kids, we was in there. I remember when they when they brought it to Irving, I know we was out there. I mean, jump out boys, everybody you can think of was right there. Playing skills, all of them. We were going right there on what was that, Esther's? I think yeah. that was, yeah, Esther's. You know yeah, right there. And we used to go up there and rip the mic. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So yeah, orgasm was the hub. You yes. know, I think they they try to they try to stay uh, on for a little bit. I think they moved to Irving Mall or something yeah. like that. They were everywhere. Yeah, Oklahoma, Irving. Um, I forgot where I was. Redbird. They they had orgasm in Redbird. For yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, so man, man. So like, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Oh, okay, man. here we go. Nah. I just, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I be keeping a player, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I you know, I say like, like, what, what's some, some people that you always wish you could have worked with that you never got a chance to work with? In Dallas, in Dallas, and in the industry, um, that I wish I could have worked with mm -hmm. definitely was uh, Outkast, um, Goody Mob, um, of course UGK. Um, Dallas, of course, the DOC, that's a dream. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, shout out, Doc. Yeah, shout out, Doc, two times, man. Um, and, and definitely in Dallas, probably some other artists that I, I, I know personally, but just never got the chance to work with. Uptight. Uptight. You know uptight. what I'm saying? That's that's my dog. Oh, yeah, Uptight. Uh, Ooh, he pulled out. C Pone. C Pone. You know what I'm Grifters. saying? Yeah. With C Pone, what's up, C? <laughs> <laughs> C Pone was one of them. And then, um, I'm trying to think. And then, probably like in Fort Worth, Genocide. Um, well, genocide? What you, are you talking about? Uh, Twisted six Black? 6'2. Six oh, 6'2. Six two. Two. Yeah, yeah, Genocide. Yeah, 6'2. I'm thinking of one good side. Uh, uh, no, you talking about Twisted Black. So, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Twisted Black is somebody that I, I know, but I didn't get a chance to work with him. You know right. what I'm saying? But he was so busy. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Twisted Black definitely. But um, locally, yeah, Genocide was definitely one of them. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Um, probably locally that I could just remember just people that I really wanted to work with just never got a chance. Oh, wait a minute. That's what's up. What's up? So, now, okay. So, I, so, what do you, what, what do you, what do you, um, what, 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 what puts you in the mood to write or what, you know what I'm saying? What you consider your style is, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it could be anything, you know right. what I'm saying? Right now, um, the stuff I've been jamming lately is uh, I'm back East Coast. Okay. The, them Buffalo dudes, the Griselda, uh -huh. uh, Benny the Butcher, Conway the oh, yeah, Machine, Benny the you Butcher. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if you heard this guy, Stove Guy. Nah, I haven't heard Stove. You heard Stove Guy? Oh, my God. When you hit okay, Stove Guy, you're going to be like, did he just say what I thought he said? Yes, he said that. He crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Stove guy, but uh Ransom, Sky Zoo, and then uh, of course I'm I still listen to my southern stuff. Um lately I've been on the the, the old Tony Draper Swaff House, you know what I'm saying, sound. So I'm like I'm listening to Mr. Mike and Crime Boss and Tila and you know what I'm saying, eight ball and I'm just like, okay, man, we used to just, oh, oh I remember this. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm listening to Tila album just going down memory lane, I'm just like Oh, we used to be in the streets of this. We was just, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, that takes so, a yeah. But yeah, as far as just oh, sitting there just writing, you know what I'm saying? It just depends on what type of mood I am. Um, I could be listening to some, some old school and be like, okay, I want to write. Right. You know what I'm saying? It just, just depends. But I can tell you this, if you don't feel it, don't write. 
Right, right. I noticed you and Picasso been hanging real tight together. I've seen y'all, y'all two been two peas in the pies like over that's the years. That's my dog. You I know, that's, that's my especially brother. over the years, y'all been putting in the mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? You're, that's like, my brother. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He, if it wasn't Picasso, it would be no Jalo. Right. Period. Right. You know what I'm saying? And nobody's going to say that. You right. know what I'm saying? If it wasn't no Picasso, it probably would be half of these cats. Right. They just don't want to admit it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. All that weirdo creative doing crazy stuff on shows and stuff like that that's all Picasso I don't care what nobody say right you know what I'm saying he started it and they just Picasso will do something to start it and then he'll step off and, and somebody else will come in and act like it's theirs right you right. know what I'm saying yeah, that's how it go you know so but uh but yeah he from day one you know what I'm saying he's the one that pushed me you know when I got radio play he was like look y'all better get behind Jalo and push right he the one you know what I'm saying? He was the influence at Red Rum. James was the businessman, but still, Picasso was the one like, look, push. Right. Right. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. So, get it on out there. Yeah. You know, he's like, look, we got the momentum. Let's get that one good thing about Red Rum. I was worried about my work that, you know what I'm saying? When I when I sat down, I'm just like, okay, am I going to be able to work with Google? I'm like, oh, no, he's, oh, he's, he's different. Studio session, Saturday. Oh, all right, all right, cool. What time? We're going to be here this time or whatever, whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. And it was funny when I first started recording, I always wanted to record in the morning. Right. Nobody wanted to record in the morning. I, <laughs> Saturdays was good for me. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm like, I could take off and be good. Let's start in the morning so by, by the time 6 o'clock hit, I could be free, go to the mall, give me something, then go to the club. Man, I got there at 9 o'clock one time and I was ready to go. And so they was like, it's 9 o'clock. On a Saturday morning. Are you serious? Yep, let's go. All my ideas come early in the morning. That's backwards compared to a lot of other people. That's how sometimes some people work. That's what you know what I'm saying? So we we would work and then once Google seen that okay, he's ready to work. That's all it took. And he he's a workaholic, you know what I'm saying? So he didn't have a problem with that. So I love that. So what you got in the store now? I'm working on some new stuff now. Uh Shout out to Lil Kaz. Shout out to uh, Ghetto Priest. We working on a project together. Hey, Ghetto Priest still doing it, huh? Yeah, that's what's up, that's what's up man. Because I remember <laughs> I had, I ain't going to lie, man. I had came across a Ghetto Priest CD. You know what I'm saying? I still got it. What's so crazy, I still got it in there in the, in the CD case. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, was going to Ghetto Priest. With I think, was that his first? Or first album, the one with the car in front of him, he's standing tall in a black suit. Uh, I think so. With the silver, uh, get on was, was it? Was that the one with nickel and dimes on it? I think so. That okay. gotta be. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, I think that is his first one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I still got that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, Ghetto Priest is a, a big influence on me. You know okay. what I'm saying? Um, shout out to him and Mr. Long. Uh, they were really the ones that kind of kick-started me. I'm like, so, you know, I show love. You know what I'm saying? So now, he see me, he was like, you got me through the door. I wasn't getting no radio play. You got me on the radio. <laughs> Right, I'm, right. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Kaz. Kaz was like, once I once I left Red Rum, I started hanging around with Kaz and DJ K Rock. I don't know if you know the DJ. Yeah, DJ K Rock. Yeah, yeah I had so, him on the show. Yeah, so uh, Shout out to those are the people that I hung around, you know what I'm saying, all the time. I was always at Jamie's and so right. K Rock and Do Right, they was the DJs, you right, know what I'm saying? Right. So they're my peoples, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I hung around Kaz and uh, I worked with Big Clint. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no big clink. Yeah. I work with Big Clint and, and me and him got some stories and you'll laugh when you hear them. I hired Big Clint at my job. And so when he came in for the interview, he was in a flannel and some jeans. And I was just like, What in the world? Come on now, dog. You And so when he did the interview, I was like, wait a minute. He act like he got some sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. I said, Y'all need to hire him. He was like, Are you sure? Look how he dressed. I said, maybe he couldn't afford nothing. Yeah. And so he was, I said, but well, look how he talking. Look how he carry himself. You know what I'm saying? So, that nigga was always wild with You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, but well, look how he carry himself. He had on a flat on some jeans. You know, he was a big dude. I'm like, maybe he couldn't afford nothing else. But look, he came up for the interview. He was on time and he killed the interview. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know if I'm at him. So I got, got him hired on. And so I looked so, on his resume. It's like he did promotions, and so that's really what clicked in my head. Uh, he didn't know. I'm like, okay, you do promotions. I know what goes on when it comes to promotions. All right, cool. So they hired him. After that, we got in there. 
he got in there and then I'm the way one that got him on that uh, I said there's some people up here that work for Def Jam you might want to go with, hook up with them they do promotions too so I let him he, he got on with Def Jam through from working up there with me and everything else is after that and that's when Ben Click came and got me at Palm Beach and like he was working with Duff Def Jam and he wanted to sign us and we were, okay it all it all makes sense now all right that's so crazy yeah, how small this word I'm, I'm and I'm I'm the reason for that me and, me and Big Clint was the first ones at our job. We had two ways, and so that was our connection. We we started out with two ways, and, and from there we're gone. And I mean, it's more stories, but yeah, I'm the reason why. You know, uh, he got on like Def Jam, and he started from there, and then he just now he with no limit, and like Big Clint, come on now for real, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Yeah, Big Clint, yeah, I remember he had A1 and all them at that time. Yeah, yeah, Big Clint, shout out Big Clint, man. So, man, like, golly, man, you know, I just want to say you're a legend, you know what I'm saying? I just I want to know you, I want to know you, we giving your flowers right now, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate like, it. You ain't never got them, we giving them to you, you know? Yeah, people, uh, people forgot. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. I ain't tripping. They know the song when they hear it. Right, they the like, oh, that's my jam. <laughs> and then they like, oh, that shit. <laughs> 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 I be chilling nah, in the cut. Man, I used to, man, I used to come in, you know what I'm saying? Especially because you know Flavor come on at 11 o'clock. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? You come from the skating ring, boom, boom. There he you. said the skating <laughs> ring. <laughs> Not Roller World. You know what I'm saying? We come from Magic Skate, oh, nigga. Uh, we come from uh, motherfucking Hot Wheels and uh, Hot Wheels. Uh, yeah, we come from everywhere. We went to every skating ring around this mug. You know what I'm saying? And boom, we come up in there. Red Bird, you know what I'm saying? Skating ring, we all up in there. You know what I'm talking about? And come back home and then flake. You know what I'm saying? And y'all be on there, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was in rotation that and like at that time, you know, I think that's that that going away, that right a lot of a lot of that puzzles, you know what I'm saying? Greg Street, the flavor TV, uh, you know, the fish bowls, the all that that you know once once that disintegrated due to the internet and all that and, and some more stuff too, you know what I'm saying? It ain't just internet, you know what I'm saying? It's janky business and stuff and we all know. But at the end of the day, it kind of took the light away from Dallas. It kind of took the history away from Dallas too, because a lot of people. Because I know I was growing up, we was getting to know who was out here. We knew yeah. when we went to the CD store, we knew all of it. I'm from Dallas. Oh, woo, woo, yeah. woo. Now it's, it's a real, it's a disconnect. A lot of people don't know what's what. You know what I'm saying? It's if like you you got to get to know, you know, you you hear people like naturally blowing up. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I give it to the cats. You know what I'm saying? Um, R.I.P. to Mo Three. You know what I'm saying? That. It hurt the city, you know what right. I'm saying? No matter how you look at it, it hurt the city like, look, y'all was about to blow. And then all of a sudden, it just make it all stagnant. And it make people look at it like, why are we gonna come to Dallas? People getting shot in Dallas. That's all you hear. People getting shot, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, that's the reputation we got. We got good music, and we got a whole lot of talent, but don't nobody wanna come to the city because everybody getting shot, or getting shot at. Right. You have the top top two people in the city, Mo three and Lil Beezy, and they beef with each other, and one of them end up dead, and the other one is getting shot. Why we want to come to Dallas? Right. The OGs are coming back. We are resurfacing. Shout out to Bobo Luciani. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, boy. Uh, shout out Bobo. <laughs> shout out to Bobo. You know what I'm saying? And Money Waters. Money! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We we coming back and it's just like we ain't hating on youngsters by no means, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like if y'all ain't gonna do right, we gonna come in, we gonna show y'all how to do it. We together now, you know what I'm right. saying? And that's really what it is. When Money had that video shooting, had all the OGs out and we all sitting in the room and everybody was like, it's like you kinda look out and it's just like is everybody gonna be cool? Man, I wanted to be there too, man. Everybody was cool. I wanted to be there. Like everybody was cool. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We seen we seen Pookie and Lucci re-leak hook up and it was just like everybody looking like, they go Pookie, they go Lucci. Okay. And then they hit and it was like, brothers, like I ain't seen you in a minute. And it was just like <sighs> You know what I'm saying? It sparked something. You know what I'm saying? So Man. you got blowfly, you got 
Lil Shout Will, Lil you Fly. know what I'm saying? You, know you got rifle uptight rifleman. You know what I'm saying? Money did this. You know, you got uh, Bobo, you know what I'm saying? E Rock. You Big, know J, Big J was out there at Shite's house. Man, say. Timbo, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like. Cottonmouth. Cottonmouth, man, say. You, you know what nigga, I'm saying? My, like, nigga, I make you eat your cereal, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like seeing all that, and I'm just like, wow. I said, we all in the same room. I said, years ago, we would all be looking at each other like competition. Not beef, but just. You know, I ain't right. help him. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get on myself. You know what I'm saying? But it was all love in the room. And we just, it was just wonderful. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait till the video pop. You know what right. I'm saying? When it happened, you'll see. Yeah. But it was just, it was love. You know? And it was just like, after that, it was a spark. I'm like, why we couldn't do this back when we was really on top of things? Right. If we could have, we could have took it to. So it's coming. You know what I'm right. saying? So. Youngsters, y'all better take care of y'all business and get it straight. Start some some unity and, and really bring positivity to the city. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we should have been on a couple times. You know what I'm saying? There was a whole lot of different movements. You know what I'm saying? From from our movement to the boogie movement to to now. You know what I'm saying? If both three and, and, and Lil Beasy could have just linked up and just really been cool. You know, look, y'all ain't got to like each other, but for the city... Y'all could have made everybody millionaires because that's what they do. Right. Every every two three years, everybody's looking at Dallas. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how they always do it. They they, they always look in that top five market. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They always looking at them. <clears throat> some happening, and right. some falls through. But we got it now. You know what I'm saying? Like especially, you know, like what's linking together. Us start really start starts telling people what to do with their copyrights. Yeah. And with their publishing and their ads yes. and their BMIs. And, yes. You know what I'm saying? And stay focused on their business and start knowing what what the deals that they looking for. Exactly. Instead of just looking for a record deal. You know, exactly. you don't even need that no more. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like we trying to lease something. You know what I'm saying? For like, real. Like, you know Make what I'm saying? Yeah. You, and then yeah. if we all come together and link up, look. You got my fan base, I got your fan base. Right. Link. We're making this happen. Cool. All right. You know what I'm saying? I got love with all of them. You know right. what I'm saying? When, when it used to be out there, me and Lucci, we, me and Pookie, we was never competition. We just right. like, I know who you are, I know who you are, but we just never linked up. You know right. what I'm saying? But it's just like, man, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't got no problem with North Dallas. Hey, y'all niggas cool to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. Everybody in South Dallas. Hey, y'all cool with me. You know what I'm saying? So... You were all to know. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that deal dub, you know what I'm talking about? That deal dub, that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I did the song, technically, I wanted to unify Dallas, and that's right. the hardest thing to do. Right. There's no way. It's but you can hear it in it when you when you putting it together, you know what I'm saying? Like you're saying, Ag Town, Funky Town, D Town, you know, it's just, it, 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 it's self explanatory, you know what I'm saying? If a person overlook it, they just, you just, you, your mind just somewhere else. <laughs> like, yeah, because I wasn't on no, it was none of that. It was just straight up. I'm trying to bring it all together. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and the noise that it made, you know, it had a, a lot of attention. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I wasn't in just, just, just this market. It was Mississippi, Arkansas, you know what I'm saying? Definitely Houston, uh, you know, Arizona, these places right, or whatever. Right, you got to travel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People like, were telling me, it was like, I heard you in New Orleans. I didn't know you did. Stop playing. <laughs> no, for real. I'm like, Okay, if you say so. Right. I, I was, it's not on our radar, but right. somebody sent me up. The guy heard you in New Orleans. I'm like, all right. So yeah, so and then it was different at that time because it was hard for y'all to really even grasp y'all demographics. You know what I'm saying? Without, yeah. You know the proper like paperwork or the proper people going out. Yeah, we, you know, we, we knew where we were getting plays. So right. That that was the thing. We knew right. where we was getting radio plays. Right. Because that was another thing they they made me do remixes. Right. When I say yeah, I was yeah. doing everybody's hoods, right. I'm doing all the Houston hoods. I'm shouting out. I did my version with they Houston hoods. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you can imagine, imagine going yeah. down, you know. Oh, dead end. <laughs> Goddamn. You South, know, Park, the South Park. Fifth you know Ward, Fifth Third Ward. You know what I'm saying? So I'm shouting out all these hoods. I'm like, I'm looking at the people. These are hoods I got to say. Okay, cool. Let's go. So I did the same thing with Arkansas, Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? And Houston. Those I remember. Where I'm from gave me nightmares. It's like 15 different versions of that song. 
that with that lot of money with them different cut them different copyrights. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm letting y'all know some games right there. All them different songs he had right there. Those each those those different copyrights. You know what I'm saying? He had different PAs and different SRs. You know yep. what I'm saying? And to this day, that been ching 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 ching. ching. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's always valuable. Like it's like like who's been your biggest support factor? Who really been in that corner? Really, really just like really rooting for you. As far as the market. Everything, no, you just really just supporting you and everything that you do, you know what I'm saying? And this music and just life in general. Um, I would say my family, you know what I'm saying? They they supported me, even though I'm a preacher's kid. Once once I started getting radio played, they couldn't even deny it. They were just right. like, Look, sit down. We don't have to talk about this. <laughs> you know, I'm, when I say I'm a preacher's kid, my dad was a pastor. You right. know what I'm saying? So it was like we and so to this day my mama don't even call me Josh no more. She called me Jalo. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, like right. Because people are like, what's your mama call you? I said, my mama actually called me John. They were like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> she had work, and she worked at American Airlines at the time, and somebody was coming up talking to her. I'm like, how do you know that's my mama? Somebody, somebody was like, I heard you saw it on the radio, and she was like, my what? What? Boy, come here. <laughs> yeah, we got to sit down. <laughs> so, uh... So yeah, uh, I would say my family, but even just musically, uh, shout out to, to Picasso, shout out to Peanut, uh, you know, shout the original Peanut, family, you yeah. know what I'm saying, Abnubius, uh, the Divine and Yogi, you know what I'm saying, those were the, the front runners, you know what I'm saying, James, shout out to Red Rum, they didn't have to take a chance on me, right, you know, right, they right. could have been like, okay, he got radio play, good for him, he good, we down with him, they cool, you know what I'm saying, but they didn't have to take no chance and, you know, get me through those that I probably couldn't have got through but you know shout out to that sound good shout out to Nate you know what I'm saying he home good to see him linked up back with him you know what I'm saying and just even the stories he was telling he's like dude I've been gone for 19 years and I'm like yeah I know and so once we seen each other it felt like we were right back in 97 19 years fed you know what I'm saying Shit. people like they ask me all the time they was like well did you come up with the name Ag Town I'm like nope I showed it. I said, it's another dude. I said, uh, Dupree is the one that came up with the name. You know what I'm saying? But they started that Ag Town. I said, musically, I'm the one that, you know, I put the stamp on it. Yeah. And so they was just like, well, don't you call yourself <coughs> Mr. Ag Town? I said, yeah, I call myself Mr. Ag Town. Well, don't, did Dupree call himself Mr. Ag Town? I said, yeah, he's the original Mr. Ag Town. Right. I said, if you ever, if you know about street, you know, there's certain people that take on certain names. 50 Cent. Is a street name. That ain't his real right, name. Right, right, he right. took on that name. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sick name. Oh man, what's going on? There's another light out. We have another power show that you heard. What? We came the light. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, Dupree. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. He he's the he's the original Mr. Agtown. And as far as anybody that knows, if you go to Arlington, you know Dupree. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? If you've been in Jamie's, you know. That's Ag Town for real. Right, right, so, right. So at the time when people start calling me this Ag Town, they was like, ain't that the priest's name? I'm like, and so I'm like, the priest, they called me Mr. Ag Town. He was like, and? I was like, the priest, they called me Mr. Ag Town. I said, I'm going to tell them to stop. No. Right, right, nope. right, right. He said, if they got a problem with your name being Mr. Ag Town, tell them to come talk to me. Yeah. I was like. You carrying that torch. I said, the priest, he said, you gave us an anthem. I don't care what they say. And if you know the pre, yeah. you like, okay, all right, cool. You, you know heard that torch. You know so, what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah, now now it's, it's Mr. Agton. And when right. he died, it was funny because when he died, you know, people still call me Mr. Agton. When I went to a funeral, it was just like, yeah, Mr. Agton, the real Mr. Agton. I'm like, yeah, he is the real Mr. Agton. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? He's the one. Right. If there's a, a dictionary that got Agton in the name, yeah, his, his right, picture should right, be up there. Right, right. You know what right, I'm saying? That's so. What's up. He, he the one really. that did it, you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, you know, when you hit me up, you like, well, do you go by Jalo? Say, oh yeah, Jalo, AK, Mr. Right, I was just making sure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I know, but I know how it go though, you know what I'm saying? And but it's just like, you know, if you're a real nigga, you know, you know, with, you know, you know yeah, that's protocol. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that's protocol, bro. Yeah, R.P. to Dupree, you know what right. I'm saying? He is the, again the original Mr. Agtown, for real. R.P. to Wody, he's the one that really, you know what I'm saying? Without him, again, there would be no. There'll be nowhere from. Already, he the one. He the one that did that.
Man, it's like, man, I always ask this question before I get off the show, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I just want to say we thank you for your contribution, you know what I'm saying, and everything like that. But before I ask this last question, you know what I'm saying, are you, are you planning on linking up with the younger generation? Oh, definitely. Bridging that gap, you oh, know what definitely, I'm saying? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, definitely looking uh, up really, for that. Yeah. yeah, you got your eye on something. We've been having an eye on lately. Uh, you know what? I want to relink back up with, with Mr. Pookie and Mr. Lucci. That's something, and I know they got a lot of youngsters that's running with them now. Right. So, um, I like them North Dallas dudes. You know what I'm saying? That's probably some of the first people that I may link up with. Okay. Um, Ghetto Priest, of course, got some people that he want to, hey, look, this is who we need to run with. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Already. Um, I would love to get with Yellow Beezy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how that worked, but. I would love to get with him, you know I what I'm really, saying? Really. Just to link, I like his sound because the sound kind of will, will compliment me, you know I what I'm really, saying? I really, so I really. um, that, that's definitely, you know what I'm saying? But I've seen a lot of cats. Um, right now, you've heard of DQ Hampton? DQ Hampton, somebody, I think somebody told me about him. I think somebody turned me on to him. There ain't no telling because I probably done shared him on my page. DQ Hampton, definitely. He's definitely on the album. You know All what I'm right. saying? I gotta get with DQ. Uh, you heard Flower Child? Yes. I would love to get Flower Child. Flower Child, hold on. Yes. Yeah, she yes. got it. Yeah, she got she, it. She, she on it. Started. Yeah, she, she on it. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah, she on uh, it. But those are the top two. You know yeah. what I'm saying? DQ Hampton and Flower Child are the ones. And then uh, Floridic Desire, you know what oh, I'm saying? Okay. Uh huh. Have you heard, uh, 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 what the nigga, uh, oh man, uh, D D Davy Stone, Davy Stone, Davy Stone, boy Cole, man, say that, that boy, yeah, say that boy Cole too. You gotta check him out. I'm um, I'm um, send send you a link, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, definitely send me uh DQ if I meet what is what is his name again? DQ Hampton. Yeah, make sure you send me that if I ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? I always turn. Oh, me I'm gonna link you up. Yeah. I'm gonna link you up with yeah. it when you when you get on title. You got title or you what you got? Uh, I got everything. Okay, yeah, I got everything. He on there. Trust me, he uh, on there. Really? The, that whole, they whole click. Uh, really? They from Waco. Okay, okay. Oh, Waco always be making noise. You know, Waco always be making noise, though. They, they've been, they they been the hybrid. You know, you know what I'm saying? saying? They in between yeah, Austin and yeah. us. You back, know then what I'm when you, back then, when you were doing that, they had a dude from Waco out here in Dallas. Then what was it? Hustle Lee? Okay, yeah, I remember Hustle Lee. Yeah, yeah, Hustle Lee. You know what I'm saying? Wait, yeah. Man, Hustle Lee, they down with Clint. Hustle Lee down with Clint? If I'm correct. It might be, cause you know, cause Hustle Lee was putting it down for yeah, a if, if I'm correct, if I remember correct, I think he down with, with Clint now. He was down with Clint now. Okay. So okay. uh yeah, if, if I'm correct, I gotta talk to Kaz about that. Oh really? You just brought up I, I know talking, the name. Man, you talking about Kaz, you talking about C A C A S Kaz. Little Kaz. Little Kaz had the rap album. Yes. Well, with the black we had the black on with I'm the girl with the with I'm the come down. Yeah, I'm come down. Oh man, I can, can you kept saying I'm like, man, I know a cast that used to rap back in the day. You that's that's yeah. Big Clint. Man, no it ain't. Yes, he it was is. Kenny. No, that's Big Clint's artist. Oh, okay. Come on, I'm about to say Big Clint had an album too. No. It was on a group. We had a group yeah. on the album. No, yeah, whatever the group. Big Clint ain't rapping. Though. Yeah, I know he ain't rapping, but he was on the album though. Yes, that <laughs> Big Clint. The people, I think Hustle Lee, Trot, yeah. them all in them, that, that ring with them. Uh, Lil Cass, definitely. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. All right. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trust me. They're all of it linked together. You know what I'm saying? But that yeah, we're crazy, to, man. We used to run together. So, man. yeah. Man, that's my question. I ask everybody that bless my podcast. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you was in my shoes, what question would you ask yourself that I didn't get to ask? If you was, okay. Where would you like to see Dallas Fort Worth go? And what would your answer be? I would like for us all to really unify. For real, for real. And come together like Houston did. Right. All of Houston cats don't like each other. Out of all the ones that blew up, the Zeros and the, you know, the, the Slim Thugs and the Chameleonaires and the Paw Walls, all of them cats didn't like each other. You know what I'm saying? But, they all unified and came together and made their money. And now to the point, all of them have businesses and they don't have to eat off rap at all. Right. So that's what I want to see for Dallas. I want us to be able to legitimately have our stars truly blow up. I would love to see Flower Child on, on, on MTV and, and rock it because she has that star quality right. and bring that noise to Dallas and be like, yeah, that's Flower Child. She's not the only one. 
mm-hmm. that's here. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I want to see. I want to see DQ Hampton up there with the Nellies because that's what he remind me of. He remind me of a, a Southern Nelly. You know right. what I'm saying? He has that appeal, but can appeal to the masses. That's what I want to see. You know what I'm saying? I want to look. I know we we shout out our OG to DOC. He is Dallas. I don't care what nobody say. Right. He is the OG for real. He is the the Mount Rushmore, and everybody else is under. He is it. You know what I'm saying? I want everybody to truly respect DOC for that and not look at him like, okay, he went to the West Coast. He went to the West Coast and blew up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And he brought it back. Right, right. But he is from Dallas. Right. That's what's up, man. So, like I say, man, y'all know how we do it here. You know what I'm saying? Before we get out of here, do you have, man, the floor is yours, man. Let people know where they can reach you. Let them know what you got coming, man. Yeah. Any misconceptions you got, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The floor is yours. Misconceptions? Yeah, I'm not mean. Uh, <laughs> 100, 100. <laughs> misconceptions, I, and funny as you may sound, I know you asked me earlier, I've never smoked in my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? I've never smoked even a cigarette. People be looking at me just like, you be around smokers all the time. I allow people to be who they are. If that's what they do, that's what they do. Right. I just never done it. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's a big misconception that people always get. Right. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the thing is, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? If you want to talk to me, you can reach me at Mr. Agtown on Instagram. Uh, same thing, Joshua, Mr. Agtown on Facebook. You probably might might not get a friend request on Facebook, but (laughs) Instagram, Mr. Agtown on on Instagram, I'll follow you back, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, if you see me out, I'm cool, you know what I'm saying? Even though you haven't seen me in a while, when you start seeing it and start putting the song together, you be like, oh my God, that's him. That's been him all this time. You know what I'm saying? I be like that in the club and they like, they don't know it's me. So. That's that's what I re- really want to say. But yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Mr. Agtown. There it is. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, man, everybody get to know your surroundings. Know where you're coming from. You know, yep. somebody, like I say, stop looking down and look up sometimes. You know yep. what I'm saying? And stay lit to life. You know what I'm saying? And we will put out this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't gonna be shit. But I always knew that I would be.